Okay, the Great Pyramids in Egypt are one of the seven wonders of the world for a reason. They're big, really big. Mathematically speaking, they're beyond precise. And considering they've been around since at least 2560 BC, they're as close to eternal as any man-made thing on your planet. But who built them? Some claim it must have been aliens. Others say brute force and hard work. Tonight's guest says it was, it was an advanced civilization with incredible technology that has since been lost, until now. Our guest has been studying the pyramids for over 20 years. He's the author of the new book, Lost Technologies of the Great Pyramid, and tonight he's here to share how those advanced technologies can benefit us today. Please welcome, beaming to us live from Oregon, Stephen Myers. Ah. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Stephen, great to have you here aboard the mothership. Uh, now, when I was a kid, they told us the pyramid was built by slaves pushing giant blocks on rolling logs, up ramps, and eventually putting together this, this, uh, this, this amazing accomplishment. As you said, the pyramid's 445 you know, stories tall, 5.9 million tons, the tallest building on Earth for 3,800 years, uh, yes. which is incredible, incredible, incredible. But you're saying that's not so. That's not how you, you believe it was built. Well, traditional uh, Egyptologists have offered up a hypothesis, okay. uh, which is what you have described, using strong back muscles, and a lot of force to create the Great Pyramid. But it's fascinating that uh, much of what they say has never been demonstrated. They, the largest stones of the Great Pyramid are 70 tons, and e the entire science of Egyptology has never moved a 70-ton payload, even one inch. So uh, they have a hypothesis, they have a story to tell, but they sure can't back it up using the scientific method. All right, <laughs> you sent us a bunch of animations Let's start here at the beginning. Um, talk us through some of this. Let's start with a, you know, what, what well, are we looking we have, at? We have an old, we think that the Great Pyramid was built level by level, and so did Flanders Petrie, an early uh, researcher uh, of the Great Pyramid. And uh, it was built level by level, but it was also built using water and water locks, similar to the Panama Canal or the Erie Canal. Okay. And these water locks were used to lift the stones on barges all the way to the building site. So, so this is an example of one of these water locks that we're, we're talking about here. Right. The stone on barge would move into the water lock, and then it would rise up to the level of the casing stones, which are, which are uh, where, where it's going to go. The casing stones used to encase the Great Pyramid, and they were built with extreme precision and cemented together watertight. And this shows how in, in the early stages of construction, the uh, stones on barges were moved right to the building site. So that's how we think massive stones were moved in ancient times in a similar manner that massive objects are moved uh, in modern times. Okay, now that's a lot of water to move a distance, although, you know, thousands of years ago the Nile may have been closer, right? I mean, it was. You, you've got photographs here actually that, that don't go back that far. Certainly, uh, the uh, location of the Nile is in scholarly debate when the mm -hmm. Great Pyramid was built. But even Herodotus, the 5th century B.C. historian, said that the Great Pyramid looked like an island surrounded by water. Okay. There was a wall around the Great Pyramid, and we think that wall impounded water. And also, we feel that uh, there was a water source provided by the original builders that might have been in the ancient Lake Maurice. There's a, there's a lot to it, but okay. water was provided to the uh, building site on the Giza Plateau. Now, how long would this have taken? How long would this process of construction taken for, for something this big? Well, it's hard, it's hard to say, but water locks the world over operate 24 hours a day. So this system is very fast. The Erie Canal, which was built in the 1830s, moved the entire weight of the Great Pyramid in two years. Now, you sent us a, an image of the cross-section of the pyramids, and we know there, there are chambers inside, and there, there are various shafts. Let's take a quick look there. Um, so Yeah, the, the Great Pyramid has many uh, chambers and passages, kind of a complex network. And what we think that the purpose of the Great Pyramid was, was that it was infrastructure for the civilization that built it, and in fact that it was uh, built to be a massive water pump. And the point was to get water from low to high, which helps fill those locks? Is that the uh, Yes, that is correct. Ancient mankind was able to pump water 
in a not not the same way, but but they were able to pump water to to create prosperity, just as modern mankind pumps water to create prosperity. So let's let's keep going through this process, though. Uh, as as the levels are, are getting higher up here, um, you've got this is actually an earlier step. But so what are we looking at now? This is. Well, there, there were two large ships found uh, at the base of the Great Pyramid. They're called sun barges. Egyptologists ha have a story to tell. They say that these sun barges were used to move the pharaoh's carcass. Why they needed two of them for one pyramid is hard to say. But we think that they were used like cranes, like floating cranes. And people walking on them make the cranes pivot, and they can quickly move a stone off of a barge and then when the, uh, the, the barge is moved out of the way, and then the, uh, bar, the uh, floating crane is moved to the correct position, the people move to the front, and one of the stones is moved right into the uh, pond. So that's how this process is very quick. Using water and the buoyancy of water has a lot of advantages in, in terms of stone manipulation, movement, and uh, setting and placing stones in place with extreme accuracy. Dennis is an independent Roswell researcher. He's done a lot of research on Area 51. He's looked into uh, the uh, Giza pyramids, and he is our guest tonight. How you doing, Dennis? I'm doing good. Your civil engineering background, that put you in a really good position to understand how they built the pyramids. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about your research into the Giza pyramids. What, who do you think built the pyramids? I have no idea, really, but I, mm -hmm. I can pretty well assure you that the three pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx were more than likely not built by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. I think we have pretty good proof that, well, I know we do on the Sphinx. The, the Sphinx is deteriorated by, by water on the back of it, and consequently, the, the Sphinx was covered up to its neck in sand until the 1800s. They didn't even know there was a body there, and they uncovered it, and there was a body of a lion. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't that type moisture rainfall in that part of the world for at least 10,000, maybe 15,000 years. So that automatically would predate the Egyptian civilization. One of the researchers that I work with has done a lot of research on the pyramids, and he has come up with the civilization known as Khemetians, K-H-E-M-I-T-I-A-N. Mm -hmm. It was a black civilization that lived in North Africa about 10 or 12,000 years ago, and he claims that they think that they had contact with star people. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to say that ETs built the pyramids, but I am leaning towards the possibility that the technology to build them could have come from the star people. Uh, there's no record anywhere in Egypt on how the pyramids of Giza were built. Mm -hmm. There's probably 80 or 90 other pyramids, at least, in Egypt, and they were probably built by the Egyptians. But if you look at them, they're all poor replicas of the three of Giza. Right. And, you know, people have argued, uh, well, scientists say that this, the pyramids were built by using ramps or using a lot of people and a lot of manpower to do it. Why is that not possible based on what you've researched on the pyramids? Well, the, the Great Pyramid contains two and a half million stones. They weigh anywhere from two to 70 tons each. Mm -hmm. Those stones were quarried miles away from where the pyramids are. So if you look at the time it took to quarry them, to cut them, to load them on a barge, bring them up the Nile River, transport them across to where the pyramids are, you would have had to set a, a stone about every 90 seconds. They claim there was 20 to 30,000 people that worked 20 or 30 years. If you do the math, it, it doesn't come out. They would have had to set a stone every 90 seconds, which is an impossibility. Yeah, and uh, the, just the transportation of the stones and then moving them, that would have been, you know, practically impossible. Even with our technology today, can we duplicate the pyramids? No, we can't. Uh, they talk about using ramps to get these stones to the top. The, the big pyramid is 440 feet tall. I can't imagine how long a ramp they would have to have 
to get those stones up there. The other possibility was a spiral type ramp, which went around the four sides. But again, if you're going to do that in the time period that the Egyptologists tell us, it's not going to happen. It's not possible. I think uh, Nova on uh, public television a couple of years ago tried to duplicate building the pyramids, and they wound up using heavy equipment and still couldn't do it. But there are no records that we're aware of of who built them, why they were built, or when they were built. And another interesting thing is their alignment. If you look at the pyramids from above, airplane, wherever, they are aligned exactly like the stars in Orion's belt in the constellation Orion. Two of them are lined up. The third one is just slightly offset. And if you look at the night sky at Orion's constellation, at Orion's belt, it's exactly the same. Now, this this race of people, uh, the and let me see if I'm pronouncing this, the Comechis, Comechians? Comechians. Uh, tell me a little more about them and how they could be related to have, having created this. They lived in North Africa. They were black civilization, mm -hmm. predominantly controlled by females, and supposedly had this contact with star people. If you look at the tools that the Egyptians had, again, you have a problem building these pyramids with the tools that were available. Right. And what kind of tools did they have and what would they have needed to have built the pyramids? Well, they had copper tools mostly, and uh, there's, been, there's been research done on, on the possibility of uh, being able to cut these stones using the tools they had. But the problem I have is the time factor. If you're talking 20 or 30 years with 20 or 30,000 people to do it, then it's an impossible task. You can't do two and a half million stones in that period of time. Exactly. And the alignment with, uh, with the star systems. Um, if it were built by Egyptians, why would they do that? The Egyptians had a lot of knowledge about astronomy and uh, we found other things over the years that uh, that indicate that they did have, and uh, you know, Stonehenge is another one that maybe had some connection with uh, with astronomy. Uh, so you know, some of these older civilizations had a lot of knowledge about our stars that we don't have today. And do you believe that that knowledge came from an extraterrestrial connection? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's a good question, huh? That's that's the sixty-four thousand dollar question. I think you want to commit to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I won't rule it out. Mm. But uh, the thing with the Comanche civilization is interesting. If they in fact had contact with star people, like I said earlier, then I'm not saying ETs build them, but the technology could have well come from there.